this is your Canvas page. Remember that it has past lectures on it. So if you forgot how to do some of this stuff, come back and you can see the lectures. If you, for, if you missed a lab or some other stuff, that's up there too. Um, we are right here right now. We're going to talk about limiting and excess stoichiometry. We're going to do an iron wool stoichiometry lab. And the next two days after that will be a semester review. And then we'll have a semester test, which is everything we've learned up till now. So it's like, oh, welcome back. <laughs> OK. So if you get your notes out, we're going to finish the notes really quickly. And we're going to start with um, limiting and excess reagents. That's what the lab is about um, today that we're going to do. So we're going to do a really quick um, lecture up front. And then we're going to go into the lab. So go ahead and grab that out so we can talk and get that done. When we talk about limiting and excess reagents, we're talking about how much we can make with what we have and then what's left over. So for instance, if I'm making a ham or a cheeseburger and I want to have a, a patty, some bu a bun, a cheese, and a tomato for each hamburger or cheeseburger, when I put this together, I'm going to have some excess stuff okay, that I'm not going to be able to make. Which one did I run out of, of the things that were my reactants? What thing did I run out of? What thing made it so I couldn't make any more cheeseburgers? The patties. I ran out of the patties. I only had three patties, so I could only make three hamburgers or cheeseburgers. I had excess of the buns, the tomatoes, and the cheese. So that's putting it into, you know, into real things. So limiting reagents, what I'm going to run out of. That was our patties. The excess reagents are what I have too much of. That was the buns, the tomato, and the cheese. Now, if we look back at what we did with our stoichiometry lab, we were doing that same thing there. So what did I run out of the teddy bears? Did I run out of the marshmallows? Did I run out of the chocolate chips? What did I run out of first? Um, and excess was what things were left over, what I had too much of. OK, so limiting reagents we also work with when we're doing a reaction. So if we look at this, what in this box would represent NO? the blue and the red. So this would be the N and this would be the O. OK, what would represent the O2? The two red, because there's two oxygens together. So as I'm looking at this, I need two NOs for every one O2. And then I can make NO2. So this right here represents N with two O's. What did I have excess? Oxygen, because there's still some oxygen left here in the product. So the oxygen was my excess. What was my limiting? My NO, OK, or nitrogen monoxide. Remember that, how to name that? And oxygen was O2. OK, so we can visually see that. Now, we're not always given visual like we are here. Um, let's look at this one for a second. This is just making water. What was my excess? Hydrogen. And what was my limiting? Oxygen. OK, so that made it so I could only make three waters. When we have um, an equation given to us and we're given what we start with, we need to be able to figure out how much uh, we're going to make. So here it says, I started with two moles of this, and I started with two moles of this. And I need to figure out what's going what's to be my excess and what am I going to run out of, my limiting. And since I can look at this now, and I can say, oh, for every one of these, I need three of these, which one am I going to run out of first? without doing any math, just in your head. I've heard nitrogen and hydrogen. Which one is it? For every one nitrogen, I need three hydrogens. The hydrogen. Because if I have two moles of nitrogen, I'm going to need six moles of hydrogen to go with it. Do I have six? No, I don't have six. So this right here becomes my limiting. And this right here becomes my excess. OK? And says it wants to find out just what the limiting in excess, I can stop there. 
But if I wanted to find out how much I could make, I always take my limiting. Okay, so I would start with my limiting, which is 2.0 moles of H2. And I could find out how many moles of NH3 I needed to do by, remember, what I want to get rid of goes on the bottom. So I have moles of H2. I look up here, and there's a 3 moles of H2, so it would go on the bottom. And I put what I want to go to, which is the 2 moles of NH3, on the top. Then I could cancel out the moles of H2. And 2 times 2 is 4 divided by 3, so I got 4 thirds. If I put it in my calculator, what's 4 thirds equal to? 4 divided by 3. Sorry, my brain is not working real great. It's 1 and 3. 1.3, thank you. My brain is not on gear today. 1.3 moles of NH3. Thank you for those that helped. So I can find out how many I can make. Now, notice it's not a whole number. Okay? Just like when we were making the cheeseburgers and that, we got whole numbers. Well, when we do limiting and excess, we're not going to end up with whole numbers. And it's okay. Okay? We're going to go forward. So, and I just did that there. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't know I already had it there. And we got our formals. And da, 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 da. Anyway, you could do it the long way. Let me just do this real quick and erase this. So we did it the short way to figure out which way was limiting. But if it was really close, I can also set it up like this and say, oh, OK, how many can I make kind of thing. But it's a lot easier just to look at it and see if you can figure it out. So on this one here, I start with 4.5 moles of each. OK, now look at the numbers in front. I've got a 2 and I've got a 3. Are they the same? No. Which one do I need more of? The one that has a 3 in front of it, right? So because I need more of this one, but I only have the same amount of both of them, which one's going to be limiting? The carbon. So this one is going to be my limiting. And this one will be my excess. So my excess, I really don't need to worry about, right? Because I've got too much of it. But I can use my limiting to figure out which one, how much I'm going to make. Say I wanted to find out how much iron I could really get out of this. OK, so let's start with a 4.5 moles of carbon. OK, somebody tell me, what would I put on the bottom? What am I trying to get rid of? Good, the 3 moles of carbon. Got right from the equation. When I am in moles, I can go right to the equation. And what am I trying to get to? I wanted to find out how many moles of iron I could make. So I'm going to put that 4 moles of iron on the top. Then I can cancel out the moles of carbon. 4.5 times 4. You guys do that on your calculators and divide by 3. And what are we going to get for our answer here? 6. Wow, six moles of iron. We should probably should put 6.0 just because we had two significant figures. OK, not too hard, right? We're just using the equation to help us figure out how much we've got. But the first thing with limiting in excess is I've got to figure out what am I going to run out of first. OK, so that's the big thing there. I know I've got some other things underneath here, so we're just going to go back through it fast. So on this one, if I went through each of them, I'm going to erase this so you can see behind it. If I went through and took each of them all the way to the end, say it was really close and I really didn't know if I, which one was limiting, I could take each of them to iron, and the one that made the least amount would be my limiting. OK? So if it was something like 7 and 8, and I didn't have the exact same amount of each reactant, maybe I had 10 of one and 7 of the other, and I couldn't figure it out in my head, I could do this really quickly for each of them and figure out which one made the least. OK? And that's another way to do the limiting. OK, so we talked about limiting in excess. Um, assignment 6.4 would be due next time. Did we correct 6.3? I can't remember. I think we did, didn't we? OK, um, so let's go really quickly to your lab. And let's talk about your lab for a minute. OK, first thing I want you to do is go ahead and balance those equations. And then balance those equations. 
right there. Once you get those balanced in part B, go ahead and add up the mass of those compounds. Remember, we use the periodic table and we find out how much each one is and times it by the co the ex or not exponent subscript. Okay, somebody got the answer for number AA for me. What do we need to do for AA to get it balanced? Two and a two, right? What about for AB? Four, three, two. What about for C? Three, two. What about for D? Nothing. Okay, has anybody got A added up? on B, B, A. Okay, as soon as somebody gets D, A added up, would you let me know what it is? Yes. Iron is 55.845, it's number 26. Middle of the D, top of the D. Okay, so I'm going to give me an answer for molar mass for A. 71.844, thank you, grams per mole. What about B? 8, 7, so 9. We're going to do um, five significant figures because we usually don't need more. What about C? Nobody's got C yet? Two thirty one point five three and D A seven point eight four three. Okay, if you've forgotten how to do this, basically all we all you should have done is taken iron's mass, like for B, which is fifty five point eight four five, times it by two, add to it three times oxygen's mass, which is fifty fifteen point nine nine nine. Okay, and that's where we got these. We're gonna use this. We're sort of doing on this um, lab, we're doing parts. So when it gets to the stoichiometry, we've got all the parts. We want to stop and add things up. So what we're going to do is we're going to weigh a small beaker. You've got a plastic beaker in the back, and you're going to weigh it. Then you're going to get a sample of still wool, and you're going to put it in the beaker, and you're going to weigh it. Then you're going to use that sample of still wool to start out as the mass. So you're going to start here with the mass of iron for all of these. So you're going to start with the mass of iron. And you're going to have to write small here. I'm sorry I didn't give you a lot of room um, because we're going to get all this messed up in here. We're going to change iron into moles, so we have to divide it by the 55.845 grams of iron to get one mole of iron. And then we're going to have to go back and forth because on this one we're going to go to see if I made FEO what it would be. So I come back here and I'm going to use this two and this two to convert back and forth. So I would put two moles of Fe gives me two moles of FEO. 
Okay, so I can go back through and grams of Fe go out, moles of Fe go out. Now I'm in moles of Fe. Oh, but I need to go all the way to grams of FeO. So I go back again to here, and I look at this mass, 71.844, and I come here and I put for every one mole of FeO, there's 71. Point, didn't remember it long enough, 844 grams of FeO. And so I'm going to have this all set up so when I get back in lab, whatever I weighed out for the mass of iron, I'm going to subtract the weight of the beaker. I'm going to put it here and I'm going to do the calculations really quickly. So my moles go out and I actually would end up with grams of FeO. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up the next one. What would I put on the bottom here, the first one, step? I do the exact same thing that I did on all of these for the first step. So I'm going to put the grams of Fe, I'm going to put one mole Fe and 55.845 grams of Fe on all of them to start with because I have to be in moles of Fe to be able to do the calculations with the um, stoichiometry. Okay, so on this one right here, we're going to go back and we're going to look at B. I'm going to look at here and here. So the ratio is a little different. So I'm going to put 4 Fe on the bottom and I'll put 2 Fe203 on the top. So 4 moles Fe, and I already forgot, was it 2? Yep. 2 moles of Fe203 on top. And again, I cast out moles. And then the next step would be what? Remember what we did next? One mole on the bottom. Good. And where am I going to get what I put on the top? I look back again right here, and there's that number I need to put on the top. So 159.69. Help me remember that. 159.69. Thank you. Six, nine. You knew I was going to forget when I got to that, didn't you? Okay, so mole of Fe203 goes out. Then when I finish here, I'm going to have grams of Fe203. So again, I have to wait till I get to lab before I can finish it because I need this number right here at the very first. Go ahead and set up C and D. Use the same pattern that I've been using for A and B and set up C and D. Okay, how are we doing? We getting this all set up? Anybody having a problem or need some extra help? Okay, so this lab is fairly simple. You're going to have a plastic beaker. Now remember we're going to be working with hot stuff, so please don't put hot tongs onto plastic beaker because what's going to happen? It'll melt, okay? So you're going to come pick up a plastic beaker from me. You're going to weigh it. You're going to come and pick up a piece of still wool from me. You're going to put it in. You're going to weigh it. 
how am I going to find the mass of the still wool? Subtract the beaker. So you'll notice on the top of the right there, you have a place for the mass, actually for the bottom, you have a place for the mass of the beaker. At the top, you have a place for the mass of the beaker and the still. And then you're going to subtract those two to get in number four, the mass of just the still wool. Once you get the mass of just the still wool, that's when we're going to come back and we're going to put that mass of the still wool here, 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 and here. And you can do calculations real quickly to find out how much you should have ended up with at the very end. We're trying to figure out if we burn the still wool, what am I making? Am I making FeO? Am I making Fe203? Am I making Fe304? Am I making Fe2, FeO2? What am I making? Okay. So what we're going to do is we've got to add oxygen to this. And in order to add oxygen to the still wool, we have to burn it. And as we burn it, we've got to add some oxygen to it. So we're, we're going to use our top hat, remember, to, to do the top hat to light the burn, Bunsen burner, hold it right above it, and push up and in so you get a spark. Okay? If you don't push up and in and you just go like this, you're not going to get a spark. You're just going to wear down my flint. So press up and in to make sure you get a spark. But you've got to catch some of the gas in there. That's why you hold the top hat over it. Once you get this going, and I've got all the red ones out there, so hopefully you know, I would go to a red one. I think there's only one um, area that doesn't have a red one, and this is a small class, so make sure you get a red one because it burns better. You and your partner are each going to grab a pair of tongs. What you're going to do is carefully, and this is one lab I would suggest you wear the aprons. You're going to what I call belly up to the bar with your apron because you're going to try and keep all of it onto the lab area and not on the floor because you want to capture, capture all of it. And it is going to spark and it's going to fly everywhere. This is what I call my New Year's Eve or New Year's Day lab because it gives you all kinds of sparks. If you've got long hair, tie it back because it will catch on fire. Okay, so you're going to take this and over the, over the Bunsen burner, you're going to be pulling it apart while it's lit. Okay, but you're also going to be blowing on it. Please don't pass out by blowing too long, too hard, and don't blow your Bunsen burner out. So you've got to blow and pull it apart, and blow and pull it apart, and blow and pull it apart. And things are going to fly and go everywhere, like I said, belly up to the bar, so it keeps it on the, on the top here. Once you're all done with all of this, before you go back, grab a piece of scratch paper. You're going to take that scratch paper and you're going to scrape along the top of the thing. Do not use your hands because if you use your hands, it's going to get stuck on your hands and it's not going to be able to be weighed. But you want to be able to scrape this all back into your beaker. Okay? You want this beaker with this still wool after to weigh more because it's going to have oxygen in it than it did before with the still wool and the beaker. If it doesn't, guess what? You go back, you dump this out, and you do some more pulling apart of the still wool. And you go back and you say, oh, I missed this part right here, and I'm going to scrape some more. Okay? This has got to weigh more before you leave lab. You cannot come with a negative amount, okay? Because you're not going to be able to figure out which one it is. If you do it well and you add the oxygen like you're supposed to, you're going to get a good result. No, you, I lie. You're not. You're not going to get a good result with this lab. You're going to be lucky if you get 20%. Okay? But that's because we don't have pure oxygen flowing into it all the time. Okay? What are you blowing out when you usually blow out? Carbon dioxide. You are blowing out a little bit of oxygen, but mostly carbon dioxide. So it's not reacting as much as it could have reacted had it been pure oxygen. Okay? So the results on this lab, as far as percent, are not great. But when you get to the second page, go ahead and turn over. You're going to make sure you weigh it, the speaker with the oxidized still. That's after you've burned it. It's got to weigh more. So put a little note next to number 10. Number 10 has got to weigh more than number 3. It's got to weigh more than number 3. If it doesn't, you've got to go back and do more. Okay, and then you get to your analysis. The first one is just put an X by what one you think it is. So you've got to do this calculation and try and figure out how much did you make. <coughs> So you're going to have to take the beaker away from the thing at the end again and find out how much you had and which one it should have been. Okay? Then I do hypothetical. If the real formula was equation C, then go ahead and do all these calculations and figure out what your percent yield was. It's going to be sucky. I'm going to tell you that right now. 
if you get 100% yield, I'm going to go, um, something's screwed up because there's no way. Okay, so you're going to go through that, get a percent yield. You're going to tell me what things could have gone wrong. Hello, I just told you. What, what was one of the things that could have gone wrong? Not enough pure oxygen. What else could have happened? I told you to do something with your belly. If some of it fell on the floor or some of it went into somebody else's stuff because it's going to be flying. I'm going to tell you it sparks. It will fly. Okay, um, so there's some error analysis there. And then conclusion. On your conclusion, we're working on conclusions, right? I want you to tell me using the data that you get. So that is number two, number, number one, number three, number four or five, whatever it is, number 10 and number 11. That's your data. Okay? Using your data, tell me what you learned about stoichiometry. Okay? Questions? When you are all finished, the waste, still wool, goes in the garbage. Okay, this goes back on the cart where the other still wool is so the next class can pick up still wool. Everything else should be nice and tidy and clean in your area and I will give you a tidy stamp. Then you'll come back in here, finish this and turn it in. Questions? Okay, um, goggles, mandatory. Girls with long hair, make sure you tie it back. Um, aprons are mandatory today. Okay, see you in lab. <laughs>